morning viewers um, so daily vlog today it's all about metal detecting but not everything is about metal detecting I'm gonna talk today about um, losing my lovely wife Rach well how I met her first and then how, how I cope after I've lost such a lovely lady so I hope you'll find some of these vlogs inspirational. I'll cover some topics like um, how detecting helped me kick a 24 year drug habit. I'm going to talk about rates today. Lots of inspirational topics that will have metal detecting as a part of them. All right. I'm going to show you a clip now of um, the first weekend that me and Rach ever went on. We've been together nine days at this point. I just moved into a flat and uh, on this weekend uh, we stayed in a nice hotel courtesy of our friend Costas. And um, we messed the bed up. It was full of Guinness stains and crisps and all kinds. And... Uh, I proposed to her on that weekend uh, after nine days over by Great Yarmouth. It was out of Paul Howard, let's go digging. Big up to them as well. Um, yeah. So, show you a clip of me falling in love with Rach. And I met her on a blind date in a ploughed field too. So, it's all detecting related. Isn't it bunty? Okay, I'm just catching up with uh, Tecton Rachel again. And we've got this small, thin, hammered. Doesn't look to be silver, unless it's leached out. Certainly don't know who it is. There's a design on that side too, but it's not quite as prolific. Something going on there though, look. But well, that's very defined. Well, with all that writing and stuff. We don't know what it is, I've just tagged Alistair McKay off our coin experts expert. But basically it's our first hammered, even if it's copper, isn't it darling? Yes. So, what do you think of getting stuff like that out the ground? Marvellous. <laughs> Sound? You best film Stevie's hammy dance then, I don't care. I'm not doing a hammy dance. No, but you can film mine. Yes. No. Oh. Yes. Yes. Okay. Stevie and Rachel, they're on the first. A romantic cheeky little hammy. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Can I oh, stop it? <laughs> <laughs> I've stopped it. I, no, I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Is he filming still? Is he filming? You pop. So that was me getting all goofy, falling in love with my dear Rachel out metal detecting courtesy of my friends let's go digging and costas um yeah and it was lovely like i say i met her on a plough field on a blind date we were we were anxious we didn't know whether we'd hit it off <clears throat> we did hit it off and rach suffered from insecurity from past relationships so when i Proposed after nine days, she didn't think it was serious. Um, I also announced it in the Treasure Hunter magazine. <laughs> uh, yeah, so cool. Here's, here's a clip of Rachel finding her first hammered coin at Detectable, which is also metal detecting related. It is. I don't know whether you know, like, but Detectable is the biggest UK event. She found her only hammered coin there. Happy days with the dais. She found her only hammered coin there with the dais that Peter Turrell gave me. So big up to Leisure Promotions too, foreseeing potential in me back in the day and, and being very good to us over the years. Um, yeah. Just at Detectable. I had to go back for my spade because I didn't like the one I was using. By the time I got back, I've just uncovered a target for 
Rachel because the ground's a bit hard but she got this target I just helped get her out and as anyone can see that's a cut off that and it's Rachel's first ever hammered coin oh and it's lovely that side and she doesn't like being filmed but I've got to get at least the fist pump off Rachel in a sec for this lovely half cut off hammered Not sure what it is yet. Rachel, let me get you in focus first, darling. I'm in, you're in focus now. Okay, yeah. Fist pump. Woo, woo. <laughs> first hammered. So now, um, we get round to the subject of how do I actually cope? Well, sometimes I have struggled. I'm not Superman. I'm not Superman at all. Well, during the... Uh, illness and when we had the decline and when we actually lost Rachel she did not get any bit of luck whatsoever um, she was complaining about pain in her back uh, she was doing a job for three months um, that was like a little uh, suck it and see type of thing see if it was any good it turned out that she got conned and didn't get paid for them three months uh, she felt a bit guilty about that and um, she took a job working in a industrial Christmas lights facility and she was filling skips, setting fires, working like a labourer and she's such a talented lady and uh, clever and she was doing that like a penance for herself because she felt guilty that with the family kitty that she just got ripped off for three months and while she was doing this labouring pretty much that's where it was she started having pains in her back uh, so she was complaining to the doctor for like three months and they were just misdiagnosing this cancer with muscle spasms and stuff and uh, after three months she changed the GP to another one they they misdiagnosed it all. She was due to have a routine hysterectomy for fibroids. But, um, yeah, so they had to give her a clean bill of health for the fibroid operation, hysterectomy, in February. Now, at this point, bear in mind, she's stage four terminal cancer. But the hospital missed it as well. And they proceeded and gave her a hysterectomy which is a massive operation for any woman and um, takes six weeks recuperation um, all while she's got this cancer so she had that and she didn't complain she was like yeah I'm, I'm, I'm getting better from my hysterectomy even though she had this cancer she was an absolute legend proper tough cookie soldier loving wife loved her pets amazingly i think the worst day of it was when um because it hadn't been diagnosed she eventually turned yellow and um she went to the gp gp kept her waiting that day for an hour she was on time at 4 p.m she didn't get in to see the gp till uh, 5 p.m um, she was writhing in pain in the waiting room, couldn't sit still, tried to lie down even in the waiting room, kept begging any doctor walking past, kind of come in, kept the waiting for an hour. Um, by that time, my car parking had uh, run out, so she went in and I had to nip out and go and get my parking sorted. When I come back and went into the GP's room, Rachel was backed up into the corner like a scared mouse. She was up on her tiptoes. Her hands were spread out on the wall. She was a picture of pure fear because uh, the doctor had said, you've got to go to the hospital immediately. And that's how I found her that day when I walked in. Uh, when she eventually got the diagnosis from the hospital, 
um, we went into a cubicle and there was a doctor in there and his young assistant and uh, Rachel just looked at him eventually and said, well, how long have I got? And the doctor and his assistant just got up and uh, walked out the cubicle and left us. Um, we went out and sat on a bed. I, I collapsed in a heap of tears in front of other people on the ward. Uh, then at that moment, while I was crying like a baby, we got word that there was another serious uh, family uh, incident that needed immediate attention. And so I had the decision to make them whether I had to leave the hospital with my wife after just finding out and what mid mid tears and go and sort this sort of family domestic thing out which I did do. We never had not no luck in any of it, me or Rach. So strong, beautiful lioness of a woman. She had to learn how to be a cancer patient, if you know what I mean. That wasn't her role in life. So she had to be brave, which she was amazingly brave. Um, yeah, so there was no treatment as such. Massive shout out to the metal detecting community because when I first thought we could get treatment, I thought about being private and uh, we raised £6,000 within seven days from you viewers you my viewers and my facebook friends that was amazing and that's part of how i get through this with all our wonderful people so eventually with no treatment from the nhs and rates getting thinner and worse we budgeted them and um he said go in to see a specialist and we'll see about palliative chemo not even chemo that could save her um, took her up on the Thursday for a, a discussion about palliative chemo in a wheelchair she was very thin the doctor decided that if she could come back the following Thursday and walk into his office he would give her palliative chemo so the following Thursday Somehow she found the strength. You know what they look like when they're, when they're that bad. She walked into his office. The doctor didn't really want to start her on palliative chemo, but she kept her end of the bargain. He said, come back next Thursday and we'll start the palliative chemo. Next Thursday. The next first day was the day she died. Rachel was uh, an amazingly intelligent woman, very strong, strong-willed. She took no messing from silly Stevie. Always, uh, not always, but any time she thought I needed putting in my place, she did. And each time she did, I loved her that, that little bit more. Didn't, didn't we bunt on you? Um, yeah, she's very intelligent. She had um, an honours degree from Bath University in English literature and Irish history. Uh, she was a freelance writer sometimes. She was a journalist sometimes. One of her writing jobs was um, a whole series of articles spanning many, many months uh, for the American school syllabus. So it actually went into American schools, articles that R Rachel wrote, teaching their children about the history of the American Civil War. Uh, we bonded over many things, me and Rach. Uh, we bonded over both having tough lives for different reasons, both knowing the meaning of hardship, uh, our favourite thing to bond over or things were music. She worshipped David Bowie. I introduced her to Hawkwind, which blew her mind. Then she started worshipping Bob Calvert. 
check them out. Uh, and another one we really bonded over was our writing. I love writing poetry. I love writing for the Treasure Hunt magazine, not even though I haven't lately. We were just um, a super tight unit, me and Rach. Um, not forgetting, I've had a recent illness. Um, still got it. Uh, struck down with prostate issues. And I was feeling anxious, so struggling to find a way to stop the pain. Um, I kept going to my GP. They put me on a double dose of antidepressants 10 weeks ago. And uh, the upshot of that decision was I was suicidal for about two weeks. Nothing to do with grief and losing rates, I don't think. Simply couldn't stop thinking of suicide for two weeks recently fortunately yet again i reached out to the metal detecting community and uh sought out people in that community or counselors they helped a lot i reached out all over the place because i knew i wasn't going to top myself but these tablets just kept injecting suicidal thoughts into my brain so on a normal day when i'm not having adverse reactions to tablets and that how do I cope? How do I keep going out and making these videos that make me laugh? And other people. Well, one thing, Buster. Buster here is uh, key to all of it. He's 15 and a half years old. He worshipped Rach, Spanish rescue dog she re rescued out there when she was a reporter. Uh, I live for him now. And I know he ain't going to last forever. And that's why I fall in love with that little doggy that little bit more each day. I do. And that's why he's been in my videos a lot lately. And uh, so what? It's not all finding hammered coins. It might be me feeding my dog. That's how I cope under my videos. <laughs> you grumbling, Bubbles. You br grumbling, Captain Bunty. Yeah, bless him. I also cope by inspiring people in these difficult times. First time anybody messaged me from hospital to say they were, they had cancer. Some old guy messaged me. He said, uh, I've got cancer, Steve. It's not looking good. Um, been sat in hospital all week laughing, watching your videos. And that, that was like four or five years ago. No, it couldn't have been. No, because he ain't been doing them overly. Uh, it must have been about three years ago I got that message. And not only was it a message from this cancer patient, it was a message to me about just how, how things can inspire and take people's mind off horrible situations. So I'm inspired to be inspiring. I've spent so much time these last two weeks counselling people who suffered from um, sexual abuse, um, grief, uh, hospital visits. Had another message this week, another guy. Been in hospital all week laughing at me videos. That's how I cope by distracting people who are suffering and by inspiring other people. Every time I get a nice message like that, it inspires me and it helps me cope with the death of my lovely, lovely wife, Rachel. So, uh, yeah, this is a bit different, these vlogs, but that's all part of my, my coping strategy. And I know for a fact that this vlog will be very inspirational. So, I'm coping and I'm inspiring people, and I'm entertaining them, and I'm making people laugh. That's all part of me coping. And with that in mind, viewers, I hope you get something out of this. God bless you all. I love you all. And I love my Rach. I used to say to her, um, I, love, I love you more today than I did yesterday.
Rachel was just over there on the dais and he heard her say, I found a skull and crossbone. <laughs> she said it's a bit more pirate lady like. How did you say it, love? Ahar, I found a skull and crossbone. That's it. She's got a good lady pirate accent. Ah. And it's a blingy, fairly modern, yeah. big pirate badge. Yeah. You can see the lugs there. And uh, Hi there, my name is Barry and I've been asked to do this by um, SG. He's, uh, he's a pretty good mate of mine actually, um, even though I've never met him. Um, the reason why he asked me to do this, basically I have, I have PTSD and, and with anxiety and depression, but um, I spent 18 years in the army, uh, mainly reserves, territorials, if you want to call it. Um, and I, I use metal detecting as as a um, it it grounds me a lot. It really does. It's it's just so good. I can't quite say enough of it. Um, I got a I got a few. A few metal detectors so you know when it comes down to it we we do what we do um, I haven't met SG at all but um, I'm sure that he he, he sent me a, a few things over the years and I've I've um, I've actually sent him some stuff so but we'll go for a little walk I'll show you what I have he sent me a framed a framed photo of um, himself as Anglo Anglo Celtic, and I've put it in a really good spot. There we are. There we are. Oh yeah. There we are. I'll show you my show you how why it's in a good spot. A king with his throne. <laughs> 